Good Sunday evening, everybody. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, USA. I'm meteorologist Austin Onig with a check of your forecast as we head into the second full week of September. Things are going to be, again, quite steamy across much of the area. Not much of any relief immediately is in sight, but as we go into the course of the next couple of days, say toward about middle to end parts of September, there are a lot more signs in the extended forecast models that we may be seeing some much nicer nicer weather coming our way, say highs in the lower to mid 80s or so, but unfortunately that is going to be the possibility of seeing again uh, several days away for right now, so little if anything in the way of hope for cooler weather into tomorrow. So that means outdoor activities for kids at school, extracurricular stuff after school, Whatever you've got going on, working or exercising outdoors, you're really going to have to watch the conditions. National Weather Service showing, again, the possibility of maybe a heat advisory in effect at this time. Add to that, if you're going to be outdoors and you have asthma, emphysema, things like that, you may notice in the blue bar scrolling by right here, a code orange ozone alert will be going into effect for Monday, which means, again, if you have asthma or lung ailments like that, you may find it difficult to be breathing outdoors at the hottest parts of the day. Day as a soup of pollutants starts to stack up over the Mid-South area. And we could see, again, the possibility of some, again, that lingering into the next few days with little, if any, chance of anything changing in the next several days from what it looks like for right now. Uh, Ashley Norris gets cool around your birthday. Happy early birthday on September the 30th. Welcome to everybody else who is checking on through. Amy Harrison, ready for fall to be here. Agree about that one. Crystal Cackler, not much rainfall in the forecast. It would be, again, nice, but not really seeing too much of anything else uh, for right now. Gretchen Karstens, yes, my wife and I are planning a lot of recipes for cooler weather, but not necessarily seeing any reason to start stewing or getting those casseroles going uh, anytime soon. Welcome to everybody who's checking on through as we get into and around the area for tonight. Again, check the forecast in the bottom portion of your screen there, or if you want to check it out, again, can't stick around for the whole netcast. Again, go to WREG.com for our complete uh, weather update there at WREG.com slash weather. Drop your location and your uh, weather reports into the comments section. We'd love to see where you're from, city, state, and what your temperatures or your conditions are right now. Got any almanac information to pass along? That'd be great to take a look at from there. And welcome to everybody who's checking in from around the Mid-South and points beyond as well for right now. Currently into tomorrow morning, getting up and getting going. Metro area probably only going to be seeing low temperatures dropping into the mid-70s at best and then warming up pretty rapidly after that. So the kids catching the bus in the morning, going to have to dress cool, going to have to dress even cooler as they head home from school. But we'll take a look at that forecast coming up in just a bit. Weather Almanac for today, 96, the official high temperature. Again, well above normal for this time of the year. Dennis Vest, when are we going to get cooled off? Well, any day now would be my vote, but a lot of you out there have been very vocal about the idea of keeping these type of temperatures around even longer because you love summertime. More power to you if that's what you like, but I would like to see the first frost going in for right now. A little farther out of town, Wanda Marte, hope I'm saying that right, from Lawrence, Mass. Welcome to the show. Uh, thanks for joining us from near the East Coast. Hopefully uh, Dorian didn't cause too many problems out your direction, so I'll go out a little bit windy out that way for right now. Uh, Jim Goff, weather in Trenton, Tennessee, hot and steamy just like it is across much of the rest of the Mid-South, so little, if any, help uh, for that for cooler weather right there. Lori Young, 78 degrees, weather report from Munford, Tennessee. Thanks for checking on in for tonight. Currently, Oxford, Mississippi, lit up quite nicely with the new semester in progress. A lot of people out and about toward the Student Union in the Ole Miss area. 82 degrees, 70% humidity, 87 degrees heat index, even well after the sun has set. View from the area of I-240 in Pop Poplar, the towers of Poplar and Mendenhall and downtown Memphis just barely visible on the horizon thanks to all those pollutants stacking up in the atmosphere out there, and that's going to be a problem into the course of the next couple of days. Rhonda Sweet Sue Beige, 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 I'm sorry I'm slaughtering that name. 
you think with a name like Onik, I would know better. 75 degrees in Trenton, Tennessee. Thank you very much uh, for that one. And everybody else checking on through. 65 in the Motor City, Detroit. William Skage, welcome to the show. 78 in Dyersburg. Donnie Jean Brassfield, welcome to the show as well. Downtown Memphis looks pretty good. The Mississippi River, pretty nice. The mighty lights on the I-40 bridge lit up quite nicely. And the News Channel 3 backyard in the lower left portion of your screen looking over Martyrs Park. Big weather story for tomorrow is again going to be the air quality alert or the code orange ozone alert, which will go into effect. It's not in effect right now, but it will be coming up tomorrow. What that means is the Memphis metro area counties, that includes DeSoto in Mississippi and Crittenden in Arkansas, right around that metro area is going to be the highest level of pollutants out there, mostly ozone gas, which is where the sun shines down on all that nice fossil fuel exhaust we all use to get around to power our societies, cars and trucks and turns that into ozone gas of a sort and that can make a big problem for people who are sensitive to things like that. So tomorrow we may see a lot of issues with that with anybody who has asthma, might be using your inhaler more often, indoors during the hottest parts of the day would be a very good issue, again, to make certain you're staying in there and taking care of yourself on stuff like that. More information from Shelby County Health Department and the National Weather Service. Again, we'll have plenty of details and updates with Todd Demers tomorrow morning. And again, you can catch more at wreg.com slash weather for the latest on that. Clean sweeps across the area. A few thunderstorms south of Clarksdale earlier this evening. And in Jackson, Woodruff, and Independence counties in Arkansas, a few thunderstorms earlier today. Nothing directly in the Mid-South area specifically, but not really seeing too much in the way of great amounts of conditions for any showers and thunderstorms developing. Most of that is well back to our north. High pressure keeping things, again, decently quiet for here right now. Time is just about past 8 o'clock, 8.17, and we still have heat index numbers into and around the mid to upper 90s at this time, including in central Memphis, around the University of Memphis. So some pretty toasty conditions into and around much of the area for right now. Not really seeing too much help for anything else right there. Sarah Nicole Maxwell, where's the cooler weather? Hang on to that thought. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a little bit. Brian Kenneth Manns, more rainfall? Sort of. We'll talk about that coming up here uh, into and around the area. Sharon Nobles giving you a break in Proctor, Arkansas. If you're talking about the heat, we'll see what we can do uh, on that for right now. But otherwise, looking again pretty toasty for everybody out there for the time being. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, running the numbers into overnight, 70s and 80s through about News Channel 3 at 10. Daybreak tomorrow morning, getting the kids up for school, getting up for that early morning jog or stroll around the block, taking the dog or the cat for the walk. It's going to be, again, a little bit cooler back up around Dyersburg, but that's going to be about it. Rest of the area, lower to mid-70s at best for lower temperatures out there. Rest of the morning, temperatures back into the lower 90s just before lunchtime in the metro area. And through tomorrow afternoon, temperatures in the lower to mid 90s across a good portion of the Mid-South. North Mississippi, Southeast Arkansas might see some upper 90s tomorrow. Since we saw that today, I'd just be saying we're going to be coming pretty close to that again for tomorrow. Light east to northeasterly winds doing absolutely nothing in cooling us off for the time being, so not really looking too much in the way of any problems out there. Uh, Martha Frankham Whitfield, is that Haiti, Missouri, or Haiti, Haiti, if I'm not mistaken? My mom is from Jefferson City, Missouri, and there's a lot of interesting pronunciations up there. I hope I got that relatively close there. Welcome to everybody else who's tuning in for today. Picking up the kids from school, getting ready to head home. Maybe a stray shower back over southeast Arkansas, but that should be about it. And again, continuing hot right on in through tomorrow night. Maybe a chance of some more showers and thunderstorms later on this week, but not really looking at a great deal of them anytime soon. So again, not really helping out with any cooler weather at this point. Air quality alert going into an effect for the time that we have into tomorrow. And again, that'll be mainly tomorrow afternoon. Otherwise, it's just going to be plain, mostly sunny and hot all the way across the area. So wherever you are from northwest Tennessee to south and portions of the viewing area in northern Mississippi, be prepared for some hot conditions out there. Mid-90s again on Tuesday. Will the air quality alert be continued? Difficult to say right now. We'll have to wait for Shelby County Health Department to gauge the air and see what the National Weather Service says about that. Through about Wednesday, temperatures remain 
again, very much on the hot side. No relief coming up. Could be some heat advisories in our future. We'll be watching that again with a lot of interest. Now, through the end of this next week, again, we could be seeing an increased chance of some showers and thunderstorms here as we go into and around Friday. Could be a problem for Friday night football. It's a little too early to tell, but we'll watch that for now. Next weekend, limited chances of showers and thunderstorms coming up through the next weekend. The third week of September starts off just like the second one did, very much above normal. The closest we get to normal this week is going to be Sunday, back about 90 degrees. We should be in the mid to upper 80s right now, so that's as less hot as it gets, you may want to say. And as we go toward the middle part of next week, staying in the lower 90s, these isolated chances of showers and thunderstorms coming on through. But again, we're talking about popcorn thunderstorms out there only. No big front coming on through to change the numbers down. But signs past this, as we go way over here, past the forecast toward about the middle part of next week, toward the next to last week of September and the weekend there, just past this forecast here, there may be the possibility of some nicer weather in our future. If everything holds, we may see numbers dropping into the lower to mid 80s. Now again, this is what happens with the forecast. Numbers change, whether it is a hurricane forecast or a local temperature forecast, fluctuations will always occur. And the most likely option is what we are going to be looking for for right now. Through next week, not much relief coming on through. So we're just not picking up much of anything in the way of any good news for right now. But beyond this, as we see again, the possibility of maybe a turndown coming on through. We'll keep you updated on that. So again, keep it tuned to the weather experts for a lot more as to what's going on uh, in the forecast as it changes out there for right now. Hernando Bruno Brunson, 1,000 degrees in North uh, North Hell. Haven't been there before, at least not to my knowledge. So anyway, thank you very much for that quadruple digit report out there and everybody else who's checking in for right now. Checking in on the tropics, Dorian, the storm that would not go away is finally going away. Looking all the way back up through the Canadian Maritimes, what's left of the storm, now a post-tropical cyclone, as it's called, and winds are still strong. It's 60 miles per hour. It was 100 miles per hour as it went across parts of Nova Scotia last night, now heading up into the northern Atlantic. The colder waters up here should cause it to degrade even faster, but as it goes forward, this might be a problem for Greenland, Iceland, if it holds together, it might even be a problem for Great Britain in the next several days. The Gulf of Mexico is quiet. We have nothing going on developing here anytime soon, so good news for the next week if you're traveling down to the Gulf. Dorian, again, making its way up and off southeastern Canada. As we go farther out into the Atlantic, what's left of Gabrielle? Still hanging on with winds of 65 miles per hour. This one curving northeast with the prevailing winds. Iceland, Ireland, Great Britain in general might see something from this storm, possibly out of that, and another storm system just making its way off the coast of Africa, about a 40% chance of this turning into something. Still pretty far away, but again, Dorian started off in that area, so we may have to watch this one a little bit closer to see what happens in the course of the next several days. Today is the 119th anniversary of the worst storm ever to hit the United States. The Galveston Hurricane, or the 1900 storm as it's called. We've been posting snippets of this book over the last couple of days. If you've never had a chance to read this by Eric Larson called Isaac Storm, highly recommend this as a way to see what it was like pre-days of forecasting and radio to take a look at what happened when we didn't know when these storms were going to be go going one direction or the other, and just basically more than anything else, just guesswork and hearing of what happened on the telegraph wire. So if you'd like to see some pretty strong and amazing anecdotes as to what happened 119 years ago tonight, where six to 12,000 people lost their lives. That many casualties, the worst storm in American history, Isaac Storm by Eric Larson. Good opportunity to read more about weather and, of course, part of the history of the United States in one of the worst disasters that has ever happened. The passage about Clara Barton, who started the American Red Cross, going down to take a look at the damage and to bring relief supplies along. 
back then it was very common for newspapers to really inflate disasters to build up the headlines and to get people to buy the newspapers. Claire Barton sent a three-word telegram back to her family in New York. Situation not exaggerated. So if you'd like to see a really good book on that, give that a check on there. Also, National Weather Service in the next few days and weeks will be holding their fall semester Skywarn training program. If you've never taken this before, good opportunity for you to learn more about what's going on with severe weather. Best place to go to, weather.gov, click on the MedSouth, or put in the three-letter identification after the slash MEG, that's the National Weather Service in Memphis. You take the class, you learn about severe weather, you can then call in the information of the National Weather Service, becoming the eyes and ears of the National Weather Service out in the field. So you can call in or email or send a report in by amateur radio. We need your help. So if you would consider becoming a volunteer, that would be very great. And the more we have out there in the way of people trained and know what to look for, the better off we're all going to be, the better off we will all be protected from severe weather. So again, please keep that in mind as you, again, go throughout the next few days. If you got kids that are kind of nervous about severe weather, again, about maybe, say, eight or nine years old, and they'd like to know more about this to kind of have some control over an un what seems to be an uncontrollable situation, this is a very good place to go to. So if you'd like more information, again, check out my social media pages for more details on that. Temperatures through the evening only dropping back into the mid-70s. Winds light out of the southeast. No rain, no thunderstorms to worry about, but it is going to be, again, some pretty good amounts of heat, uh, humidity and very warm into and around the, uh, the rest of the Mid-South. Sunrise will be at 638 tomorrow morning in the Memphis metro area, and that means, again, for the kids getting up for the school bus, going to have to dress cool, and as you head home from school, Hopefully you've got an extra supply of water with you, biking or walking out there, because we're talking about some pretty brutally hot temperatures, especially for extracurricular activities. Please use caution and common sense as we go into tomorrow, because we're talking about some dangerously hot weather across much of the Mid-South. That'll do it for tonight's edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. Questions, concerns, ideas about what you want to see on here? Complaints, if you absolutely must, again, send them to me at austin.onic at wreg.com. More information on the 7 to 10 day forecast going to be tonight on News Channel 3 at 10. And of course, Todd Demers will have more on his forecast coming up bright and early. News Channel 3 Daybreak starts at 4.30 Monday morning. Thanks for joining us tonight. Stay tuned for all the day's news, weather, and sports tonight on News Channel 3 at 10.